Hello and welcome to episode number 103 of the Canadian Prepper Podcast. We are recording on January 31st, 2020. My name is Eric. I'm the host of the show based in Southern Ontario. I'm a hunter, target shooter, ham radio operator, and of course, computer geek. As a first responder, I've witnessed an over-reliance on emergency services during major events, and I started a small preparedness company to help people get better prepared for at least 72 hours, if not longer. I'm Alan. I'm a safety trainer, first responder, security expert, and overall safety nerd. Right, if you want to help support the show and keep the Canadian Prepper podcast on the air, you can buy some swag. Uh, we've got the Canadian Prepper podcast t-shirt and the tactical Velcro patch. You can grab that at prepperpodcast.ca. All the proceeds help keep lights on and the backup generator fueled. And they look really cool. <laughs> they look tactical. <laughs> if you are enjoying the show, please take a few minutes. Like us on Facebook, submit a review on iTunes. Uh, we also want your feedback, good or bad. Even if there's just a topic you want us to cover, email us at feedback at prepperpodcast.ca. All right, so we've got some combustible content for you in this episode. Yes, oh. Ian, I changed it. Don't get too <laughs> mad. We're going to start off with some preparedness-related news. Next, we'll let you know what we've done for our preparedness since our last episode. Then we're going to get into the main topic, getting fired up. <laughs> um, so we have when we're, whenever we're talking about fire, I'm going to rant about carbon monoxide. Um, so the first article that I put in there <laughs> uh, is about a couple of um, people that died during what is being called an ice fishing mishap north of Winnipeg. Um, they're listing the possible cause of death as carbon monoxide monoxide poisoning that is yet to be confirmed um, so our thoughts go to the families of, the, of these poor unfortunate souls when I was reading the uh, article I was thinking and I'm fingers crossed that it would maybe a, a, a lesson on quality of ice or something like that but no it was just carbon monoxide and I'm gonna keep ranting about it until we get better at it uh, <laughs> the other article I put in here uh, the country of Myanmar, it used to be called Burma back when I was a kid, um, their leader who may or may, may or may not have been duly elected uh, and most of the uh, leadership of the country uh, were taken in an early morning raid and it doesn't really say who took them but apparently their election was uh, hotly contested and it was some kind of landslide thinking maybe that was rather Putin-esque and um, now the, uh, the people who are in charge or who are supposed to be in charge are missing. So that uh, uh, is a developing hmm. situation on that part, in that part of the world. And um, who knows that may, that may turn into something bigger, but they're uh, it's stump, something. Those are, those are two things that are happening outside the world, out in the world that are not uh, COVID related. So there we go. I think it's probably going to turn into something bigger. I, I think it is too. Yeah. Uh, I can see Ian in the, the live chat here. He's already starting with the uh, the comments. <laughs> Listen, Ian, if you can't be bothered to come on the show, then yeah. you don't get you don't get to make jokes. Yeah, I think I've got a ban hammer button here somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Behave yourself, Ian, or you're getting the ban hammer button. All right, so I've got a news article here in it's titled "Government of Canada Introduces Further Restrictions on International Travel." So, yeah, I've got a COVID article in here. I, is what it is. It's a proper podcast. Of course, we're going to talk about it. Uh, but yeah, the, the government's talking about uh, putting more restrictions in place for travel to uh, sunny destinations because um, you know only elected officials are allowed to do that. So you can't go. Yep. Uh, the rules apply to thee, but not me. Yep. Um, it, it's one of those one of those things where, you know, maybe this is actually a good idea. Yeah, and maybe. maybe it was a good idea, you know, a year ago when mm -hmm. this whole thing started and perhaps, perhaps our two weeks to flatten the curve might not be into month 11. Yeah, you know? it's a lot of two weeks. It's a long two weeks. <laughs> it's like in an internet two weeks. Yeah. <laughs> uh, should I just hit the explicit button now? <laughs> um, our, our frequently absent panelist, Tyler, put in a, uh, a quick note about how, to, how uh, we can end hunger in America by making a few... Uh, making a few little changes to the food system, and that would solve a whole lot of problems. Um, Tyler, I apologize in advance. I didn't read the article. I'm just reading the reading the title for it. Um, but it's uh, again kind of a commentary on how um, we can do better if we choose to, and just stop being lazy jerks about the, about the grocery store. Yeah. And Tyler, yeah. if you don't show up soon, we're, I'm going to have to ask for your shirt back. Yep. Saying. Just saying. All right, let's move into uh, what we've done lately for preps. So for myself, I, uh, I got uh, tearing into my skidoo 
and uh, tried to troubleshoot it, thought that I had it solved. It was running um, fairly well once I was finished tinkering with it, and it would start on uh, the first pull, and I thought I was a, a pro mechanic, and then the next day it wouldn't start again. So um, I, I waved the white flag after many... Uh, many hours of YouTube videos and talking to friends and trying to figure out what was going on with it. I finally said, you know what? I've spent three days on it already. I learned a lot. So there's that at least, but uh, I decided to bring it down to the shop and let the pros look at it. So I highly suspect they're going to laugh at me and say uh, <laughs> it was this stupid, but <laughs> oh well. <laughs> well, it, it's uh, uh, as long as they're not charging you for, as long as they're not charging you the, uh, the you worked on it first premium, you'll be okay. No, they're usually pretty good about, uh, about stuff like that. So I told them everything I did and, they're going to have a quick peek at it and, and see. But I did learn a lot about the internals and how it operates and how it works. And I did get it going for a certain period of time. So I still count that as a win. But uh, yeah. I said, sometimes you got to know when to fly the flag, right? And Absolutely. And you know, how much how much is it worth to have it fixed versus your time to not be doing anything else while you're trying to fix it? Yeah, exactly. So there's that. And then besides that, I've just been uh, studying because uh, there's a promotional process going on at work right now that uh, is taking a whole heck of a lot of my time. So... Well, these, uh, those are the things that, uh, uh, you know, when you, you look back on it and be happy that you did, you did all the prep work. Exactly. Um, I got some reading time in this week, got a couple of new books in, um, that's, uh, you know, it's been, a, it's been a good time. Um, sticking to my five a week workout routine, seeing some excellent progress, which is fantastic. It's been, uh, it's been a great, it's been a hell of a grind since, uh, December 1st, uh, when I started this program, but I'm, uh, I'm happy with it. Did some meal preps for the week today and getting some service done on the I spent today cleaning the truck out. Uh, I've only had it since August. It's amazing how much crap can be contained within it in that time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but my, uh, <laughs> I noticed my, my, my heat stopped working the other day, which is, uh, you know, it's, it's cold around here. And that was, um, it seems to be an electronic issue because sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. And I, it's usually related to the, to the, to the screen. Um, it's one of those things where I just despise the technology that goes into a vehicle because it should be so much, it should just be a knob and not, you know, 37 electronic controls, but you know, that's neither here nor there. I don't get the choice <laughs> anymore. Nope. And, uh, um, so yeah, today was a good day to clean up the truck nice. and, uh, that's about it. It's been, uh, um, like you, I've got some, uh, some, some work testing coming up. So I've been focused on that more than absolutely anything else. And it's been, um, it's been a long grind, so that that for me comes to a comes to a head on Wednesday, and we'll be able to move on from there. Well, look at that! I'm uh, my stuff's on Wednesday as well. So, well, there we go. We'll be uh, uh, we'll, we'll be we'll be yeah. drinking Wednesday night either way. Perfect. I like it. Yep. Um, I do have one other thing to add. I forgot to mention for uh, for what I've done lately is I've been messing around, <laughs> shocking with the ham radio. I know that's what? weird for me. I know Come it's strange, on. right? Really strange. Uh, but I've been screwing around with FT8 or FT8. So. Um, you uh, ham radio purists out there, you can curse and swear at me. I know FT8's evil, uh, but it's uh, those that don't know, it's a digital mode on uh, HF that um, allows for uh, communication. It uses your computer. It's not uh, EMP proof at all, uh, but it, uh, it utilizes your computer to send a signal and it uh, can get some really good long distances if it's set up correctly and doesn't cool. take a whole heck of a lot of power either. So I just messed around with that. It took a little while and uh, one of the local guys here in the ham club helped me troubleshoot a few things because I couldn't get it quite right but so is it is it still nicely. transmitting over your antenna or is it transmitting yep. over it's still transmitting over your yep. antenna okay yeah so your computer takes control of your HF rig and it transmits the signal over your antenna and then other um, radio stations pick it up over their antenna uh, the computer encodes and decodes the message though and it's okay it, it's completely automated it's basically a hello call sign hello call sign and then your readings back and forth for signal strength and then, okay, thanks. And then you go to the next. So it's not anything crazy or, you know, you're not having big long conversations, but it's just about making contacts. Cool. So, yeah, that was kind of neat. Something different. Interesting. All yeah. right. So maybe I'll get into that in a, a later episode. Well, that's there. There was a suggestion about that, wasn't there? there? Certainly was. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, and we'll take a quick second just to say hello to AK. Uh, seeing the live chat there, saying a uh, new listener and uh, loving the previous episodes and looking forward to uh, to the new ones. So, welcome, Fantastic. To the show. welcome to the show. And uh, 
anything you hear, anything you want to add, just drop it in the chat. We do uh, we do keep an eye on it over the over the course of the show. We absolutely do. Speaking of that, shall we move into the main topic? Fantastic. And Ian, by the way, thank you for doing all the work for us, even though yes. you're not here. That was and, great. and behaving yourself in the chat now. I see you calm right down <laughs> after the ban hammer threat. Appreciate it. Um, so we're making fire. We are. We're making fire in as many yep. interesting rednecky ways as we can. I, I believe so we are. Start... I'm just gonna I'm gonna say a bit lighter and I'm gonna bring this episode to an end. <laughs> so <laughs> I mean the the actual the, the 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 heat source is the is probably the least important part of making a fire. Yeah. Um, the 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 really the really important things are the are the stages from you've got a spark slash flame to something that is self sustaining. Um, we can go through the fire triangle of heat fire or heat uh, heat heat and fire. No uh, heat air and fuel. Right, you have to have the right proportions of each one to keep it uh, to keep a fire going. Uh, but the sustained uh, sustained chemical reaction of of uh, pyrolysis is the technical term for it, but the sustained chemical reaction of heat converting fuel to other heat um, is what is what gives us a fire that won't go out. Um, and there are a million ways, but the number one thing: keep a you need a lot more tinder than you think. Oh yes. Um, it's a it's a you know a big you know a two two handfuls is the is the the bare minimum of that. Um, that way you can't swipe yeah. right or left. That's right. Oh, <laughs> terrible joke. Oh, Eric, you're fun <laughs> for tonight. Uh, oh yeah. The yeah. Uh, uh, if you've ever read any of the any of the the Morse Kachansky book Kachansky books, um, and if you haven't, and being outside is part of your life, then please do. Um, but. Uh, um, He's, he always, he always does things based on based on hand, um, on body measurements so you know, it's the the tinder is is two handfuls and the you know the first stage the uh, is the the kindling is um, is uh, one ar is two one armful and then the fuel for the night is the size of a hug that's that's kind of how he, how he measures that and it gives you it gives you lots of uh, um, lots of fuel lots of lots of ways to keep it going and a couple of times to screw it up if you uh, um, if, if you manage to not get it right in the first place. So um, assuming you have all that part, all that stuff down and you have the right fire starters, by the way, an excellent fire starter is to grab an egg cup and like a, an egg yep. carton and jam it full of dryer lint or shavings, yep. cover it with wax, rip those apart. And they, awesome. they take a, they take a spark really, really readily. Yep, that's um, my go-to. Yeah, that's great. They're they're Hell fantastic. Yeah. Um, my cousins make a lot of fun of me now for uh, our camping trip that we went on back in the in the summer, and it was um, um, the wood was really wet, and I'm blaming the wood for it because because <laughs> why not? Because why not? Yeah. Um, but that's what we ended up using was a uh, was the pre made. We actually ended up using the pre made uh, fire starters, which are basically just wax and uh, um, wax and um, shavings wood shavings in a uh in a muffin tin so those are another if you want to make something a little bit bigger that's another one but um when it comes time to actually generate your heat let's go with the oldest the oldest one that we know of in the the bow drill so the bow drill is a is a uh um it takes it takes some skill um sure does million youtube practice. videos out there a lot of practice uh but when you get it it is so satisfying so that's got that's a board on the bottom and something to bear down on and a spindle and a uh, and and a, and a bow that goes that you can roll back and forth with it and the friction generates dust which eventually generates heat which eventually generates an ember and you can transfer that ember into your tinder and it will eventually again eventually it takes a lot of effort it will make a uh, it'll make a spark the good news about the bow drill it's it's uh in, in less stroud's terms it's the it's the fire that warms you twice because it takes a lot That's of effort to do it so it keeps it keeps you warm while you're doing it yep. um he, and and one of the things that i learned the hard way about that is that if you um if you are if, if it's not cold outside and you manage to get yourself up into a sweat doing this you can actually drip sweat onto your ember and put the whole thing out and then you're starting again and you're much, much, much that's, more upset about it. That's a great point. Yeah, that would be incredibly frustrating. So yeah. that's a uh, that's that's a, the challenge of the bow drill. It does the job. Um, it will uh, it'll, it'll certainly get uh, get the job done, just not quickly. Um, flint and steel mm -hmm. is great. Yep. Um, uh, again, 
takes a lot of practice. Takes a lot of practice to get it to yeah. get it to go. Um, Darius in the uh, in the YouTube chat says a cotton ma cotton makeup pad soaked in acetone and dipped in wax works really well. Burned through right. a foot of snow before you had to scramble to put it out before risking the table. I'm going to try that. Uh, my go-to for for years has been a cotton ball um, soaked in Vaseline, and that takes that it just takes a couple of sparks to get it going. You rip open the rip open the cotton ball. The Vaseline's on the on the outside. The nice dry cotton balls are on the inside. Um, only takes a couple of sparks to get it going. It burns for two or three minutes. Um, I'm going to try that. That sounds like a great plan. Yeah. Um, make it anything to do with fire. Balls. I'm up for trying. Oh yeah, I'm going to try that. I'm I, I'm going to. Probably not tonight, but I'll go figure out how to do that. I've got, I've got a whole, I've got a, I've got a whole bathroom full of stuff like that that we can make, we can make it go. Um, Dane Ironhand's got a good point too for the uh, the bow drill. Uh, when you get tired, you can use a cordless drill. If I have a cordless drill, I probably don't need to be using a bow drill. This I mean, really, true. I've got so many other options, including <laughs> the battery. Yep. But we'll get to we'll get to that. Um, so that's uh, that's no, that's fantastic. I appreciate that, Darius. I'm gonna I'm gonna try that. We're uh, we'll see if we can. I'll see if I can put it up on my get some video of it. Put it up on the on my uh, Instagram. Um, so we got the flint and steel. Yes, take some practice. But if you can if you can do if you can get that and you've got you know what to look for when you're when you're finding it. You don't even have to have those with you. You can. Uh, um, you can you, you can find the right rock. Use the back of your knife. Use the back of your knife blade to do that, and yeah, uh, generate sparks that way. <laughs> yeah, yeah don't um, mess the blade up. Another great if you're if you're foraging your um, uh, foraging your tinder and kindling, cedar will burn even if it's green. Uh, it has a really high oil content. It also has really open pores, so it um, it which is what makes it so uh, resistant to rot. Um, but uh, cedar will burn under most conditions. And anything that is fluffy and cotton-like. I mean, um, the cottontails are uh, the cottontails in the reeds are great uh, if you can find them. Um, but anything that has those that those kind of characteristics, even um, uh, dandelions in the when they're when they're going to seed, gather some of those up. You've got yourself some great tinder. So cedar's great. Um, oh, thistle fluff. Yeah, that's yeah, another good one. Point. Yeah. Yep. So there's there's lot lots of things out there. Um, if you can, if you can find those, um, I've I've used um, I, I find the uh, the sap from pine trees. If if you've already got if you've got some heat, um, it will it will intensify a uh, it'll intensify the tinder burning and right. keep it going for a while. It's another one. Pocket lint. Okay. Hey, pocket it lint is good. Right? Pocket yeah. lint is good. Belly button lint is not. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, you, you got other things to worry about if you've got enough of that to try to start a fire. <laughs> um, I I remember one time in scouts, and and I think I've I've spoken about scouter Jeff before, who was the uh, he was my it was our military survival instructor that uh, was our scout leader, and um, he used it he used the blade of his knife to kind of scrape some material off the leg of his pants, and it turned into enough to get a spark going to to light some other things, but it was uh, um, it was dry and it was readily available and. Um, that was uh, that was kind of that. So um, when you're out when you're out in the woods, pay attention to what's around you, and if you uh, you know gather as you go, so that you don't have to rely on the stuff in your in your bag if you don't uh, if you don't have to. Yeah. Um, magnifying glass. Uh, yes, who hasn't played around with those before? Oh man, we used to uh, <laughs> poor ants, poor poor, poor ants. ants. I mean, we we used to we used to have contests to see who could hold it on their leg the longest. Yep. Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, but it can effectively get a fire going if you, it will. Uh, it will absolutely get a fire going if it's if it's if it's a sunny enough day. Yep. Um, and I've I've seen it done with an ice cube or even a uh, balloon full of water. Oh, interesting. Because uh, anytime you're refracting the light, yeah. you're concentrating it, so it it, it can be done. Um, none mm. of these are are ideal ways to start a fire, um, well, but they work. They certainly work. Uh, ferro rod with a with a flint and steel. Those are those are that's great. I use those. I, I keep a couple of them all over the. I keep those all over the place. Um, I've got you know some in my my daily hiking bag and some in my bug out bag and some I'm just kicking around in my truck just because they work when they're wet and it doesn't matter. And um, they never run out of fuel, and it's kind of fun to light a fire without a match yeah oh if you um, get a fire going with the ferro rod it's it's awesome oh yeah it's, it's badass it's great oh yeah um yeah your eyeglasses um yep. 
-hmm. if, if you wear if you wear glasses, um, the lens can uh, will will concentrate the concentrate the sun's rays. Uh, I've never tried it with a flashlight. I don't no, either. think I don't think there would be enough. Um, I don't think there'd be enough lumens to do that, but it's um, you know that can be done. I'm sure. Yeah. Um, by There's the way, a YouTube video somewhere. I'm sure there is. Yeah. Um, when you are setting your fire and setting your camp, do it when it's when the light when it's daylight. You, know, yeah. it sucks to try and be doing this stuff in the dark. Um, sure does. Yeah. Um, another comment in the YouTube chat: a rifle scope will will act as a as a magnifying glass. It is a magnifying yeah, glass. That's perfect. It is. Yeah. Yeah, like in theory, it is. Yeah, it is a magnifying glass. Yeah. It, that, that does that, that makes yeah. perfect sense. In theory, it will um, work. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, so any any kind of any kind of lens like that will that will yeah. concentrate the sun will uh, will do that. Uh, the ferro rod. Um, we talked about that. Uh, uh, battery and steel wool. Nine volt battery. Um, I've never tried it with a with a double A or, or anything smaller oh, than a nine volt, but a nine yeah. volt battery will. Um, um, will certainly do the job. Um, a yeah. little bit of steel wool, and you touch the you touch them together, and the steel wool starts to starts to burn. And as long as you've got some place some place for the energy to go, uh, it'll it'll start. Yep. Uh, magnesium shavings. Yep. There's a uh, ooh a striker from a welding shop. Yes. Jason's got a good point there in the, the Facebook chat. Yep. You get a striker from a welding shop. You like it better than a ferro rod. I've I've used both. I I find the ferro rod A is more compact, and B is um, a little bit more reliable than the than the the striker from the welding from the from the welding shop. I've I've had welding strikers all over the place for forever, but they uh, um, they wear out. I think I find they wear out faster than the uh, um, than the ferro rods. Uh, but yes, it's certainly it's certainly a great option, especially if it's working well. If the, as long as the flint in it is in good condition, um, then they then they work well. Ian, uh, Ian, keep, Ian keeps keeps really harping on the on the Fresnel yeah. lens, but yeah, um, you know whatever. If he doesn't if he doesn't want to come on, he doesn't. Have, he, if he wants yeah. to come on, he can talk about it. Uh, Ian, you get get out of the chat and join us in the show if you want. <laughs> uh, magnesium shavings. Magnesium is one of those really cool things. Um, it's it's one of the few metals that burns um, really really well. It burns at really low temperatures. Uh, I love magnesium shavings. Uh, it's great. Uh, the only trouble with them is that they are. Uh, um, I find them really difficult to contain. So when you're actually shaving it off the block, you can you find them at Canadian Tire, or, um, Mac or Bass Pro or Cabela's or wherever. But um, they're easy to find. But I find that the uh, the magnesium. I find the, sh the shavings are really hard to contain in one spot, but a uh, like a quarter size or a dime sized um, pile of magnesium shavings and a couple of sparks, and you've got a good flame for a really long time. Um, what else does what else do we have here in the notes? We've got uh, oh barbecue Plastic. lighters. Oh yeah, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, those are always good. Yeah, take it take it out as long as it's, as long as it's still working. Then you've got. Uh, um, that's kind of a, a high-speed, low-drag option. Doesn't take a lot of space, uh, yep. but it does rely on a battery. Yep. So a lot easier than the other options we've mentioned so a far. A lot easier than a lot of the other options. Yep. Some, um, sometimes preparedness isn't always about the hard options. It's about what's going to be the most effective quickly, right? Absolutely. So, I mean, it, it's you know, it's great to have you know thirty-five ways to make to make a fire, but the easiest way is with a big lighter. Yeah, absolutely, hundred percent. There's no harm in carrying these other items with you, or being familiar with knowing how to use them, or, mm -hmm. or how to put them to use in a in a situation where you you may not have thought you were going to have to be lighting a fire, and all of a sudden, uh oh, now I need to light a fire. Well, <laughs> got some options, right? Well, and like I think just about everybody that I know does this, but wrap every piece of kit that you have with duct tape. Yep, because duct tape has. Uh, duct tape will burn forever. It's a great fire starter. So if, even if you're low on uh, low on kindling, um, uh, duct tape duct tape burns. It, it doesn't take a lot to get it going, and it will it will go for a long time. Uh, Scott mentions the USB rechargeable lighter. Um, he he sent he sent me a, a link to this. I'm actually going to order a couple for myself. They look really really slick. They're a uh, um, it's obviously like a piezo ignition, but it's a um, it it looks it looks great. So yes, Scott, that's that's great. He uh, uh, maybe I'll put I'll put a link to it in the show notes. It's a um, it was it was a cool look a cool looking tool. So it's just a little electrical uh, pulse. Yeah, the uh, the light. Yep. 
Yeah, that's between two two contact points. Is that it? Yeah, yeah. Basically, it's just a it's just a jump. Like it's a it's a ah. uh, an open circuit, and when you run through it, yep. and you're ready to go. Uh, yeah, I hadn't heard of those before. That's uh, I'll have to check that out. Yep. Um, other great few um, like Tinder sources or kindling sources. The inner tube from a uh, inner tube from a tire. Um, it'll burn for a really long time. Uh, Bane Iron Hand put that out there. Yes, it also smells absolutely terrible. Please don't do that if you're on a campsite. Or if you're going to be smoking <laughs> anything on this fire. Yeah, they're not, not going to like that. Um, the uh, um, a note about lighters, right? So the Bic lighter is probably the easiest and cheapest and lightweight and doesn't work terribly well when it's wet necessarily. But um, having a couple in your pocket, throw one in a, uh, in a in a plastic case so it's it's dry and ready to go, and you'll have a really hard time, um, really hard time not lighting a fire with that. Um, the the old Zippo lighter always always makes a spark. But it's uh, surprisingly inefficient on gas, uh, which is true. Um, I, uh, you know, I love I love my Zippo. It uh, it was given to me as a gift by somebody who's no longer with us, and uh, um, I use it more for nostalgia than anything. But I'm refilling it every week at the at the at the outside. Um, you and then, you know, the I, fuel evaporates out of them, right? Yeah, absolutely. Because there's like they're not they're not air or watertight in any way. So yep. even if you don't use them, you're getting maybe a week's worth of fuel out of it. Um, the advantage of the Zippo is even if it's out of even if it's out of fuel, um, you unpack the cotton balls from inside it, break them apart, and then use the flint striker to uh, um, to to light to light those up, and they go it goes up really well. Um, Ian's got a note in here that the flints wear out really quickly on a Zippo. Um, I've never experienced that. I think I've got the same flint that I have in there with a uh, um, that I've had for easily five years. So I'm I'm not sure that I agree with that. But uh, how many fires mileage the Zippo? Um, usually yeah. one to two a week. I make little I make little uh, little fires. Hmm. Um, usually well, sitting out in my garage with a with a scotch and a cigar, and I light my I light my uh, cigar with it. So great answer. Uh, I was I was going to say that that's why your flint hasn't worn out. But. <laughs> one to one to two a week. I'm not, I'm definitely not using it every day. Um, <laughs> But it's yeah, easily easily five years out of out of that one, um, and I think I've got a couple extra stored on, in under the under the fill cap just just in case. But I've never had a problem with it. So, um, so the question now is, how many fires is Ian starting with his Zippo? Obviously like hundreds. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Hmm. Um, yeah. So keep so wrap uh, wrap duct tape around everything so you've got so you've got tinder all the time because even if it's wet, it'll still burn. Um, what else do we put in here? Uh, remove the projectile from a cartridge, sprinkle the powder in your tinder, use the primer as the spark unit. Uh, modern powder doesn't explode, it burns. Uh, yeah, that's that's awesome. is, the, is, the pro yeah. is the proper term there. Um, but when it's exposed to air and not concentrated, it will burn much slower. Um, shotgun shells would probably be the easy way to do yep. that. Yeah, they're gonna be uh, the just, easiest to get into, anyways. Yeah, yeah, it would certainly and probably have the highest con like the highest amount of powder. Just be careful if you're gonna do it. Yeah, we yeah. don't recommend it. Maybe, maybe, but, maybe whatever you're using, maybe put it on a you know whatever your your heat yeah. source is, just put it on a stick and and uh, and put it out there. <laughs> um, <laughs> so you're, you're a few feet away. Um, I, there's a story about that too, but the the, per, the person, the, the the host of the story, the main the main character in the story is not listening, uh, and it wouldn't be fair for me to tell that story without him present because he tells it much better than I do. Um, I've seen people use a flare gun. Yep. To start a fire, I can't imagine why it wouldn't work. Road flares are great. Yes, um, they are. Yep. It, I, I've, I mean, we use we use flares all the time in the fire service, and uh, it's pretty common to see them attached, like see them used to uh, um, to thaw hydrants. So if a hydr if a hydrant's got yeah. water and it's frozen, they'll rip they'll rip the caps off yep. and uh, cram a flare into it and, and melt all the water so they can actually yep. run the uh, run the hydrant. Um, yep. Oh, yeah, flares are awesome. Flares are great, and they burn again. Yeah. They're they're something that will start when it's wet. Yep. Um, and, they, uh, really and, and they burn and they burn forever. They'll burn for an hour, two hours yep. if you want them to. Yeah, if you don't have flares in your kit already, get some. Yeah, uh, like highway some highway flares or the or little like shotgun yep. flares. Yep. Um, either or, both ideally. 
um because they do they do different they do different things yep. um the advantage of a flare gun is that it's you know you can use it for signaling as well the advantage of a highway flare is that it's um it's a static place where people can actually find your location after they're after they're looking for you here's, um, a, here's an interesting one from uh from jason in the facebook chat uh livestock uh tag glue lights easy and burns and it sticks hmm. Hmm. interesting well I've that's never, uh never thought of that. I've never, I've never thought of that at all either. So we'll uh, maybe, maybe try that. Um, I've used, uh, I've used hairspray before as a, as a fire starter. Yep. I think yep. probably most of us have, but yep. get your, uh, get your tinder and light your match and give a little shot of hairspray and um, there you go. Off it and off it goes. I mean, that's, I mean, that's potato guns one one but yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> whatever, you know, whatever you've got, whatever you've got on hand is the, is the right answer. But one, one really important thing is to practice this stuff. Um, I almost it's never. I don't, I don't think we've match. ever said that. I don't think we've ever said that before. Never once before. Yeah. <laughs> this, is, this might be the first time I've ever mentioned that. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think I, in all 103 episodes, this is the first time anybody on the show has ever said practice. First. <laughs> uh, I make. I have, I have a rule in my in my backyard. Whenever I make a fire, um, my uh, when my father in law comes, we call we call it we call it carling the fire, where he just piles about three feet of logs on it dumps a bunch of gasoline and touches a match to it. But um, um, when I make a fire, I have a rule that I don't use a, I don't use a lighter or match. It's uh, I use something that is non, like something that is, it is, you know, whether it's a bow drill or my ferro rod or um, whatever. Um, I find uh, we find it different, different ways to, to start fires um, so that we've always got the, we've always got the kind of the traditional way uh, ready to go so that, you know, if I find myself in a spot where I don't have, you know, I wasn't expecting to spend the night, I don't have to freeze and the boogeyman can't get me. Yep. Uh, Bane Ironhand's got a good point about the livestock glue. Uh, it'll glue you to everything in sight, though. So just yeah. be aware of that, apparently. So, yeah. yeah, you don't want to be glued to something and then try to light that glue on fire. I don't think that would work too well for you. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I've, I've never used livestock no, tag glue, but um, so I, thanks I for imagine the if it's if it's designed to stick to cows, it's probably designed. It's probably designed to stick anything to anything. Yep. Um, so you know, depending on depending on what you've got, I mean, you can be creative in your uh, um, be creative with what with what you've got in your vehicle. Like most uh, um, most cars, if you if you dig through them far enough, like you can probably find you can probably get enough oil off a dipstick onto a uh, um, onto a rag to be helpful. Um, you can probably do the same thing with transmission fluid, right? Those those are yep. both oil-based products that will burn. Um, I would strongly suggest you not try to get a little bit of gasoline out of your uh, out of your car because it's never going to go. But um, it's never going to go well. You're going to end up losing a lot more gasoline than you want. Um, yep. But those are you know those are those are ways to you know ways you can find find your your uh, find fuel to start your fire if you need to. Um, yeah, if you've got jumper cables, right? Jumper cables yeah. and a little bit of uh, um, make a spark. You know, it'll make a spark. Um, yeah. Or even if you've got a little bit of steel wool or something that would act like that, even a little bit of mesh yeah. um, from something. I can't imagine why you would have mesh in your truck and not, you know, a lighter. But because um, you're a prepper, and why not? <laughs> <laughs> but if the mood strikes you, yep. Right. Um, yeah. Um, a set of uh, set of jumper cables will make it. Will definitely make a spark, whether you <laughs> want them to or not. Sometimes. Found that out working on the sled this week. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, um, you know, there's you know, so there's there's you know, there are probably a thousand different ways you can start a fire. Um, some of them are a little bit more aggressive than others. <laughs> you set a set a spray paint can on top of a twelve volt battery, and you may get a fire. You may, um, you may also get an explosion. Um, it's technically a fire. It's technically a fire, whether it's a sustained fire or not. You know, whatever. Uh, yeah, but it's. Uh, <laughs> um, Darius has a good point too here in the live chat, uh, just in regards to you know throughout the week trying to find a way to start a fire. I mean, it sounds like they'd have a, uh, a fire in, on Saturday night. Um, yeah. So just spend the week coming up with ways to start that fire and then try it. Yeah, absolutely. Competition out of it. Why not? Yep. 
Um, if you're going to do a bow drill, by the way, your best uh, um, your best bet is to have a um, your spindle of a hardwood and your bottom block as a uh, of something that's a softer wood. Uh, pine is good. Cedar is best because it's it's so soft it will uh, um, it will turn into it'll, it turns to dust really nicely and it takes a spark really well. So if you, if you manage to find a chunk of cedar, then that's that's the perfect bottom board. And if you're going to have your fire on Saturday, start trying to light it on Monday. <laughs> Yeah, one. definitely, definitely don't don't plan don't start it at three. Don't start trying to make that fire at three if you plan to cook dinner on it. No, yeah, um, that's a good point. Bane Ironhand says the explosion is just a bonus. <laughs> I agree. It, it it sure is. Yep. Uh, if your if your car is old enough, because you're Ian, um, <laughs> <laughs> cigarette light cigarette lighter still works in older vehicles. Um, if you, if your car has one, absolutely that that's yep. you know it's a great heat source. It'll go for a while. Sure um, will. Uh, yeah, got um, last on the list here is just call in a napalm strike. If you've got napalm, you probably have a lighter. I'm just throwing it out there. You most likely, yeah. Can you? Yes. Um, depends on how big a fire you want to start. Um, okay. But if you're calling in a napalm strike, they need to know where to send it, and so you've probably got a flare, and then yep. uh, you probably don't need it. Um, Scott, again, um, great, great idea. Plumbing torch. Yeah, right? it's, it's a it's a great it's a great heat source. Um, you know, I have a uh, I have a little one burner stove that just runs off one pound propane tanks. Um, that lives in my, it lives in my truck. Um, there's no reason to not throw the head, the like a plumbing torch head on there. Yeah, uh, and uh, yeah, you can always the Ian also says you can just get the cigarette lighters uh, for the car at the Canadian Tire. You know what else I can get there? Bic lighters. <laughs> and then I don't have to worry about the battery in my car working or my, or, you know, if I lose my keys, cause I was in a, uh, cause I, I dropped them down the, down the hole while I was ice fishing and I'm stuck there. Um, I can still make fire. So, uh, yes. Is it possible? Yes. Do I think it's practical? Probably not. Yep. Um, and Ian's still hanging out in the chat. <sighs> you know, for all this time, you could have just been on the show. Could have been, yeah. You just, you know, this but I like it. I like it better this way. I can, I can I jab do, yeah. at me. Can't jab back. It's great. Can't jab back. We we got through the what we've done lately for preps a heck of a lot quicker. Yeah. Well, I, I just noticed that we're like we're down to the end of the list. And we're only forty minutes in because yeah. we didn't have to. We didn't have ten minutes of Ian talking about what he did. It's almost like a proper length <laughs> podcast for you. <laughs> yeah. Um, Maybe yeah, we could so put Ian in the live chat a little, little bit more often. I think we're gonna have to. I like this. Uh, <laughs> So whatever whatever it is you've got, practice with it, have it ready. Um, yeah, that's that's the key is just practice, yeah. practice, and, and practice some more, and have some fun with it. It's fire. <laughs> you got you know there's there's no reason why you there's can't no reason not have, not make a fire because it's fire. fun. Have backyard fire, uh, roast marshmallows, and make make some fun with it. Yeah, uh, Darius, a, a few comments up there made it made another good point. A fire, a fire plow more is, is a whole lot easier than a fire than a bow drill. Um, I've read about fire plows. I've never tried one myself, but I've read about it. Um, maybe that'll be my uh, that'll be my challenge for this summer or this spring when it's you know when it's not stupid cold outside and I'm not being a wuss about it. Um, and I, I'll fully admit that I'm just being a wuss about it. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, like there's, there's all sorts of different ways yeah. to, to be able to light fire. And like I said, it do, you don't have to go out and use the hardcore, hardest one possible. But if you want to go out and, and practice it and, and learn how to do it, but keep a big lighter in your kit too, Yep. then you've got both options. You've got the really difficult one that is going to take a while to complete. But if it's the only thing you've got, then that's what you've got. Uh, but if you've got a big lighter with you, then that's something that's going to make life a heck of a lot easier and you can focus on other things. Sure. But it's there's all kinds of different skills that you can learn here. There's different ways of doing it. And one way might be harder than the other, but why not try a few different options and, and just see what you can do, experiment and, and have some fun right. with it. And it may help you out one day where you're stuck and, and your big lighter is not working because Murphy's Law, your, your big lighter is not going to work when you need it to. Yep. So then you've got some other options in your back pocket. Right. Yeah, and Ken makes a good point. Teach your kids different yes. ways to start a fire. We do, we do that. We have that rule here. Like whoever's responsible for the fire, um, come up with come up with a way that you're going that you're going to do it, and then lay lay and light the fire. That's you know, yeah. uh, bushcraft 101, and that's our that's our our favorite thing is um, how are we going how are we going to do it this week? Yeah. Uh, and it's and it's a great time. So 
Yeah, you can um, work at the whole fire safety talk and, and how to get them started and all kinds of stuff with that. Yep. Don't be don't be breathing in the carbon monoxide. Make sure you've got a monitor around. Here we go. <laughs> we five minutes of the show to uh, the carbon monoxide uh, monitors. So <laughs> <laughs> that's that's two. I, I got my two references in. Uh, yeah. Uh, and uh, and yeah, another another comment and. Uh, I'm not going to try and pronounce that. Uh, I'm sure there's a, I'm sure there's a, there's a, there's a, a, a rhyme and reason to the to the letter number combination. But practice when it's not nice out. Um, it's one thing to be making a fire in your backyard when it's sunny and you've got a cold beer next to you, and it doesn't really matter if you don't have a fire. Um, I was just joking about being a wuss and not going outside when it's cold. But practicing you? when your hands when your hands don't work um, yep. is something is something totally different. Or when it's raining, um, yes. finding dry tinder when it's raining. Right is yeah. is uh, um, yeah like get get the uh, um, get out and do it when it's when it's not great and figure it figure it away. That's what that's when that napalm comes in really handy. Oh, exactly. Yeah, and that's that's a good point. Is you know everybody kind of says I'm going to go out and practice, but they practice in the most optimal type of conditions, right? Oh, sure. When I've got a, I've got a fuel supply right there, and I've got you know I'm in my backyard, and it doesn't really matter if I don't get it started and. Yeah, so if you really want to get the, get the neighbors talking, the next time it's pouring rain out, go out and try and light a fire in your backyard in the fire pit. Yep. They'll wonder what you're doing. Yeah. You'll be practicing and you might get it going. And if you do, then that's an accomplishment. And you've learned how to get it going in, in the middle of a rainstorm. Yep. Oh, I, I, I distinctly remember a, 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 a scout camp. It was at uh, uh, it was Longwoods Conservation Area, right down the road from where I am right now. And uh, it was... This it was this weekend when I you know like the first weekend of February, and it was just pouring down rain and, and we decided to we decided to skip the campfire and scatter Jeff the 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 one the that the, the same guy um, he stayed he stayed out and he got his uh, you know it was three degrees and pissing down rain and he got that fire going and. Boy, was it great the next morning when it was still hot enough that we could cook our fire, or we could cook our breakfast over the fire. And you know, he said, you know, it was uh, uh, it was a pain in the ass to do it then, but it's still raining now, yep. and we have fire and we have heat and everything's better. So, yep. Uh, Andrew's got a tip here in the, the live chat on on the Facebook chat section uh, in regards to old mechanics gloves um, with the impact rubber. You can take those and throw them in the fire uh, in your fire starting kit. It's, it smells like shit, but uh, the rubber burns good. Yep. So. And any rubber, any rubber burns great. They they take they take a spark really well. They take heat really well. Um, but like you said, they they smell terrible. They produce that really thick black smoke. Uh, you don't want to be cooking over that for a good hour after afterwards. Um, use the least amount of rubber that you can to uh, to to get the fire going. Yep. Especially if you're using it for cooking. And, and Bane Ironhand has got a, another good point. 30 degrees in uh, July, the bow drill works uh, much better. It, it always works better under ideal conditions, plain <laughs> and simple. Yep, 100%. Um, so the more, we, uh, the more we do it, the better off we are. Yep. That's weird. We're, we're actually saying practice and know how to use your stuff in this it's episode. It's crazy. Just be, be practical about it. We're, weird for us, but... It really is. We are. Um, so, Ian, did we miss anything? Aside from the Fresnel lens that I'm just going to gloss over again? Yeah. I don't know. It doesn't matter. He's ignoring uh, us. Yeah, look at that. Yeah. Well, fine. They ignore us. All right. That's fine. It's, it's okay. <laughs> Let's move into the podcast challenge, shall we? Have three ways to make fire in your pockets, your vehicle, your bug out bag, whatever. Three different ways to make fire. Yep. That could be your glasses. If you if you wear glasses, that can be one way, and your lighter and something else. Um, I have in my I have a little uh, a little pouch in my assistant lives in the door of my truck. That's just a um, like a, a worst case scenario bag, and I've got my magnesium uh, magnesium starter in there, and um, and a couple of other couple of other ways. It's got a little folding knife in it that I don't mind sacrificing to the to the uh, to the magnesium to scrape it apart. Um, yeah, and I've always got my I've always got my zip in my pocket, and I've always got at least two bic lighters in my in my truck somewhere, um, as well as cotton balls dipped in Vaseline. I put them in a medicine can, in a medicine uh, bottle, and ra that's wrapped in duct tape. Duct tape is a wonderful invention. Duct tape is amazing. If you if <laughs> I'll I'll take it one step further. If you don't have at least thirty feet of duct tape somewhere in your somewhere in your vehicle, 
you need to re- you need to you need to seriously reevaluate how well prepared you are for the role. <laughs> All right, let's move. So, have in. three different ways to make fire in your pockets, your your vehicle, your bug out bag, etc. Let us know what it is. Feedback at prepperpodcast.ca. Toss us a picture. Show us what you got. We uh, love to see all the all the variations. Absolutely. And, uh, we'll uh, we'll probably revisit this in a in in, a, in slightly warmer weather and uh, maybe see if we can get a few videos out there. Yeah, this of, is uh, uh, of what happened. A topic, and it's it's a it's another back to basics topic, right? This yeah. Is that uh, is is pretty prevalent in the preparedness community. Something that people always talk about, and it's a, it's a survival skill that you're gonna you're going to need if you find yourself in in all kinds of various different situations. That it's, uh, yeah, there is it's one there is no situation in which being able to make a fire is a bad thing. Yep, hundred percent. Yep. So uh, upcoming events, we are nothing. Blind. Nothing. The world is canceled. No. Nope. Yep. World's canceled. COVID still happening. Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, and then we've got a new section deal of the week. Yes. This is an interesting one. So SFRC in Kingston is offering free shipping for online orders using the code free ship, which could save you, you know, 30 bucks or however much, um, uh, which is awesome. So thanks SFRC for yeah. putting that deal out there and we really appreciate it. And, um, they're a pretty cool outfit and they've been around for forever. They've been around for a long time. Um, and they're uh, so yeah, they're based in Kingston. Good Canadian company. Boy, I feel like Don Cherry when I'm saying that. And uh, <laughs> good Canadian company from Kingston offering free shipping on this particular order. Uh, yeah. So use that code free ship, and yeah. it'll get you. It'll get you uh, get you some savings. So go buy some stuff from them. We, we're not sponsored by them. We just think it's a great thing that they're doing. And so we'll. Uh, um, uh, yeah, if we see any good we'll Canadian companies doing any kind of good deals or, or offering uh, things like this, then we just put it out there. They don't yep. necessarily um, sponsor us or, or anything like that. We just like to get the information out there if we see something good that we yep. think would be useful. And if you know of something that the rest of the Prepper community should know about, then drop us an email. Feedback at prepperpodcast.ca. We'll put it on the next episode. All right. Ah, shout outs. Anything I'm going to shout out Ian. Thanks for doing all the work for us for this week. <laughs> I just had to read your notes and you're not even here to talk about it. <laughs> yeah, much much appreciated. <laughs> uh, that's that's about all I got. So that's the only reason why I didn't hit the ban hammer button. <laughs> uh so email and iTunes reviews. So we had an email from listener Brian who uh, gave us a good uh good idea for doing a, a ham radio episode, uh just in regards to maybe talking about how we would hold the podcast. Uh, in the event of a major catastrophe or a grid down situation or EMP or something like that. Um, so kind of gives it a, uh, a bit of a background as to why we would do things and how we would do it. So I'll start working on that. And um, I'm slowly starting to put some notes together for uh, a more expanded ham episode because that seems to be really, really popular. Yep. Um, so we're going to do a good, uh, maybe I'll make it a couple parter, uh, but I'm going to tie that in as well. It was a great idea. I, I like that. So thanks, Brian. Appreciate That's it. Great idea. Excited about that. Uh, and then John, we talked about his uh, backup water system a couple of episodes ago. Uh, mm-hmm. Regards where he's got a whole setup with uh, battery backup where his uh, his home stays uh, pressurized and uh, his wife's happy about still having water uh, even with the power out. So uh, he set, sent us the entire setup with, uh, with photos and uh, locations to purchase some items that uh, he uses. So... Um, we're going to figure out a way to get that out to everybody. I just want to um, anonymize some of the stuff before I put anything else out in the email. So, um, yeah, yeah, that looks like, that looks like a really interesting system, John. I really appreciate you sharing, taking yeah. the time to share that with us. Yeah, yeah, it was really, uh, it was really good. That, uh, that it's uh, it's a really good write up. He's explained everything quite well. So I just need to find a way to uh, to get it out to all the listeners in a in a way that makes sense. I don't know if we can really do it in a podcast fashion. Uh, we can talk about it certainly, but. Um, Putting it in writing is probably going to be a lot easier. So I might do a blog post or something like that on the yep. on the uh, the podcast page, and then everybody can can look at it. But uh, I just want to go through it and, and make sure that uh, it can't be tracked back to him. So yep. And great. then we've got a one more review on iTunes from the twenty second of January, uh, and it just says great resource. There's so much useful information to learn on these podcasts. I'm hooked. Uh, keep the episode coming, boys. So, certainly will appreciate it. 
since Ian's mentioned it three times, um, we'll talk about uh, book club yeah, coming yeah, up at the end of the we month. We were getting there, Ian. We were getting there. <laughs> it's because he didn't put it in the show notes and he was panicked that we were going to forget we're still, it. We're still getting there. <laughs> um, so we, uh, we decided to, to uh, um, directly rip off the other CPP because yeah, why not? 100%. Without question. Um, uh, so we decided the first book, and when I say we, I mean Ian decided the first book was going to be 77 Days in September, which is a novel of survival, dedication, and love written by Ray Gorham. Um, so find that out there. Have a look. Read it. I know we're all reading it. Hopefully, yep. it's a much longer book than I'd originally thought it was going to be. So uh, we have to put a little more attention into it than I than I had been. It's a nine-hour uh, audio book. Wow. Um, maybe I'll get the audio book for my uh, my trip up to uh, to Eric's neighborhood for the end yeah. of, the, oh, but I won't be on the episode. So maybe I'm out of the, maybe I get out of this one. I know. All right. <laughs> we, um, we expect a written book report. <laughs> I expect a written book report. Got it. Um, so there's a uh, so. Go find the book. Um, join us uh, last Sunday of February, which will be the 28th. So four weeks, five weeks from now. And we'll be talking about the, uh, talking about 77 days in September and what it, what it highlights in terms of how, um, how bad things get when things get bad. So um, check yeah, that out. And uh I'm sure we can probably put a link to it in the show notes through uh, through Amazon. Yeah, absolutely. And the whole idea of book club is we're going to pick a, a, a different book each month. And then at the end of the month, we're going to sit down, discuss it. We're going to talk about things that we like, things we didn't like, uh, realisticness of the different scenarios that are um, proposed in the books or that happen in the books. And uh, just talk about what we thought was, uh, was well done, what we thought um, mm -hmm. wasn't and, and how we think it could apply to real life versus not and have some fun with it and gets everybody's brain thinking and, and working. And uh, anybody that is participating is welcome to, uh, to come on the show uh, like we did with the hundredth uh, hundredth episode uh, where you can come on and chat with us or you're welcome to just join in the live chat and, and type away if you, you want to do it that way as well. But it's always an open invitation to come on the panel, anybody that's interested, even just regular shows. It doesn't have to just be book club. Mm -hmm. yeah, we yeah. Something come, a come, come join us yeah we want especially to when Ian's not here with everybody so figure that would be fun and why not rip off the original cpp why not yeah all right well with that i can see ian is calming down we mentioned book club i, I think he's taking <laughs> a breath he uh you know he's put his lighter back in his car and uh, <laughs> I think we're good now. So with that, I will bring episode 103 of the Canadian Prepper podcast to an end. Uh, you can find the podcast on Podbean, Sp uh, Spotify, iTunes, or of course your favorite podcast app. Now, uh, please help us out and submit a review. It helps other people find us. We do record these shows live on Facebook and YouTube. If you want an early peek of the show, please subscribe to the YouTube channel, Canadian Prepper Podcast. Click the notifications tab. Gives you an alert when we're going live, which is usually somewhere around 9 p.m. on Sunday evenings, 9 p.m. Eastern. Except this uh, evening it was 9.02. Yes, Ian, I saw that you mentioned we were late. <laughs> Although his comment did come in at 9 o'clock, but <laughs> it did. that's neither here nor there. <laughs> um, if you want, if you want to find me uh, directly, um, you can get me on Instagram at ppswo or by email Alan. That's with one L at prepperpodcast.ca. And you can uh, check out Rapid Survival at rapidsurvival.com. You can get me there on the live chat. Uh, you can also email me at feedback at prepperpodcast.ca. So thanks for joining us this evening, and until next time, be prepared, stay safe, and keep learning. <laughs> <laughs>